What's up? I hope you're having an amazing day and let's have a small chess challenge and see if you can handle this simple and elegant endgame position. It is white to move and win and therefore you gotta figure out what should white do. And just to clarify, the pawn moves down here and it can possibly be promoted over here, therefore white needs to stop that somehow. Having a rook against the pawn normally means that you want to win, but of course it's not easy. This is a chess endgame study composed by Richard Reddy, who was one of the greatest players of the time, and he composed this in 1928, and it became one of the most classical endgame studies of all that also illustrates a brilliant, a very important chess rule. All right, let's try to figure it out together. I hope that you already made your decision about which move should be supposed to be winning here for white. Now, so clearly white needs to do something about that pawn and white needs to blockade it. Therefore, if the move, if the rook moves somewhere on the side, that doesn't really do the job because then the pawn can just keep pushing forward and then white would still need to relocate their rook somewhere to blockade this pawn. And therefore, this move is probably a step in the wrong direction. So let's revert it back and see what else white can do. So the second most natural choice for white, assuming that their rook has been attacked by the king, would be to move their rook down here to d1. And that is a, a mistake, a critical mistake that does not allow white to win the game. But of course, it's extremely difficult to figure out why, because that's actually the most natural move for white to play here. So let's figure it out together. And that's actually the beauty of the Reddy's idea. Now, black would obviously try and push their pawn forward. And now the white's challenge is how can white bring their king somewhere closer to this pawn? And the problem is all these squares in front of the white skin are controlled by the black skin, and therefore the white skin cannot make any progress. It can't go forward and approach the pawn. And if white tries doing that, if white tries going that way, say, okay, let me just go around the pawn and approach it that way. Black says, no way, I'll just keep it closed and plays king to d5. And if white keeps going there, black keeps going here and keeps pushing the white skin off the pawn. And if white ever moves the rook somewhere, what happens is it would worsen the position of the rook. So it's a really interesting position of a mutual Zugzwang, where both players don't want to make a move, because any move would worsen the situation for either side. So let's put the kings back here. Now let's see if uh, white moves their rook you know, elsewhere, somewhere to the side, then the pawn can just go forward and the rook would have to go back. So that's probably not the right thing to do. And if the rook comes forward, the problem with this move is that it gets closer to the black king, and black king wins a crucial tempo attacking this rook that way. So if white king tries to approach, now black wins this crucial tempo, and after that, the pawn will just get pushed forward, the king will go here, and the pawn will go here, and ultimately white will have to trade their rook for a pawn, and white couldn't win. Now, let's see how white should have played instead. So, the solution is, we gotta get the position we just observed, but let black play the move. And with that in mind, the correct move for white would be either a rook coming here to d2 or to d3. So there are, in fact, two winning moves, which is a drawback for a chess study. But I think we should excuse Reddy because anyway, he illustrated a brilliant idea. So for example, if the rook comes down here to d2, black pushes their pawn forward, and now white plays rook back to d1. And we got the same position as compared to the previous version, but now it is black to move. And black is at the crossroad, and whatever they do will actually allow the white skin to come closer to the pawn and to win the game. So that's how the Tsukzvan works. And it illustrates this great idea of the opposition, where you've got one square between the kings, and whatever king moves gives some space advantage to the opponent. So that's exactly the case for the black king. Let's say it goes forward here, then the king comes, comes over here, and it reaches the pawn very soon. So let's try to do this. And the king actually reached the pawn in time, boom, and on the next move it's going to be captured and white wins. There's actually also a stronger way for black to try to keep their position. After white moves their rook down here, black pushes the pawn, white comes to d1. Now it's black to play. Instead of trying to move their king forward right away, which allows the white king to also come closer to the pawn, black may try to say, hey, I'm going to stay around somewhere here, not letting the white king to come closer. But in this case, white also saves the opposition, and because it is black to move, anyway, black have to give weight for the white king. So that's the beauty of the position. Black would prefer to skip the move and to do just nothing, because white can't make any progress at the moment. But because that's against the chess rules, black has to play a move. Whatever they do, that would give some space for the white king to expand. If black king goes 
left, the white king will go right, and vice versa. If black king goes this, this way, the, the white king says, okay, I have some space over here, and now I'm going to catch the pawn and win the game. So let's try to continue the race. So black tries here, and white is right on time to capture the pawn on the next move and to win the game. And there we go with the final puzzle for today. It is white to move and win. Another endgame study by Richard Reddy. Once again, the black pawn comes down here. So on the next move, the pawn is going to be promoted. And basically, the white's task is how to stop that or how can white win despite a black promoting the pawn. And if you can find the solution, please write it down below in the comments. And if you can't find it, then just scroll to the comments and I'm sure somebody will find it there. Also, if you want to learn the three most important endgame rules, then you may click over there and check my video that covers that. And also, if you want to level up your chess skills overall and reach all your chess goals, then you may watch my free masterclass by clicking the link over there. Wishing you a great rest of the day, keep crushing it, talk to you soon.